All right, Algebra 1 crew, we are on to Unit 3, and Unit 3 is still dealing with graphing lines, okay? But now we're going to be more like, it's going to be more about finding the equation of a line, which we talked about a little bit, but it's going to get a little bit trickier because um, there are going to be situations where we were not given much information about the line, but we're still going to be responsible to find this equation. Okay, so still the same type of thinking, right, with, with uh, you know, lines and that slope-intercept equation, uh, but just a little bit different of a type of a problem here. Okay, so we're going to start with the one that's a review, right, one that we did in unit two, and then we'll get on to some newer stuff. All right, so looking at number one here, again, I'm given this line, and so my job is to find the equation of that, and again, to be able to find the equation, I need to find the m and the b values. Okay, so what does that mean? That means I need to, uh, again, first plot specific points on here. Where does it cross through a corner? And again, it helps us start with the one right on the y-axis, because that, if you remember, is going to be a very important point to us. Uh, and then I keep tracing along. Where does it cross through a corner? And I have a bunch there. I'll stick with that. Okay, so again, this value, this point right here, right on the y-axis, you might remember, is my b value, right? If we were drawing the line, that would be where we began drawing it, right, on the y-axis. But I look at where that is, and that is here at positive 7, okay? And so that is my b value, okay? And then my slope, my m value, okay? So I look, where is this line moving? How much is it moving from point to point, okay? And again, I'm thinking of that as a fraction, right? Rise over run. How much is it moving up or down on top? And then how much is it moving side to side on the bottom? Specifically, again, on the how much is it moving right? That's what I'm worried about, okay? So I start with the point that I have that's furthest on the left that I have drawn, which is this, okay? And then I count how much is it moving up or down till the next point. Well, it's moving down one, and then it's moving right one, two, three. So down one, right three. Again, as a slope, that would be negative one, over three. Okay, that would be my m value or my slope. Okay, so putting that together in my slope intercept equation, it would be y equals the m number times x, so negative one third times the x number, well, or, or just times x, and then plus b, so plus seven. Okay, so that would be the equation of this line. Okay, so again, that should be a review, something that we did uh, earlier in other videos. Okay, but now I'm going to get into the new stuff that's a little bit different. Okay, okay, so I have numbers two and three up here. And again, this is a scenario where we're still asked to find the equation of a line. But oftentimes in unit three, what we're going to be shown is we're not going to be shown the actual graph. We're more going to either have to like imagine that or mainly it's just specifically kind of dealing with the slope intercept equation, okay? And um, yeah, knowing what these M and B values mean and, and, and what, again, what those, what they stand for, okay? And so this is the easiest situation, okay? It's problems like this where, right, find the equation of the line based on the information given, okay? So we just have this line, okay? It'll this line on the graph that has these qualities, okay? It has a slope of negative three, and it has a y-intercept of 4, and our job is to find the equation of that, okay? And if you know, if you know a lot about your slope-intercept equation, you might know, like, wow, I'm given just about everything I need, and you're right, you are, okay? Because the slope, when it says slope, again, what letter is that? Well, that's m, right? So I'm given my m number here, and I'm given my b number here, because b is y-intercept, right? So it really helps you to know what these letters stand for so that you can just quickly jump right into answering these, okay? So if my slope is negative three, okay, if I put that into the equation, that's gonna be y equals m times x, so negative three times x, plus or minus my y-intercept, and my y-intercept positive four. So that's it, okay? So this is an easy scenario because you're given all the information that you need to put into your equation right away, okay? And then you're done, okay? Because that's the equation of this line, okay? So that's awesome, right? Now number three, the slope being zero and the y-intercept being negative three. Same thing, right? The slope is m, the y-intercept is b. So you could just go right in and say, okay, y equals 
zero x minus three. But if you remember, hold on, pulled out my horizontal line slope here, right? If you remember, horizontal lines are the ones that have the zero slope, right? So if this slope is zero, right? We don't usually write equations like this, right? We would usually write it as y equals whatever the number is, right? So we could even just say y equals negative three. Okay, so that would be the real equation of this, this line. It would be a horizontal one, okay? So those are awesome problems because they're super easy and they give you all the information that you need to, to answer right away without you having to do much work, okay? Now, unfortunately, not all the problems are that easy. Okay, we're gonna do one more type of problem here that are a little bit more difficult, so here we go. Okay, now I have numbers four and five up here, and so look at what you're given here. It's the same directions, okay? But this problem says, number four, if the slope of the line is two, but if it goes through the point four comma seven, okay? So just breaking down what it gives to you, again, just kind of picture this. If you are given a graph, okay, and this is just gonna be a very rough sketch, okay? We know that the slope of this line is two, okay? So we know generally what it's gonna, you know, what it's gonna look like um, overall, but we don't know exactly like where on the graph this is gonna go. All we know that, all we know is that it goes through this random point four comma seven, so that'd be like up here, okay? And it has a slope of two. So we know generally what it would look like, but again, we're, we, we're not given enough information to just jump right in and say, oh yeah, this is what the equation is, okay? Because what's the key part that I'm missing, right? So I know the slope is two, so that's gonna be my m number in my equation, but I don't know exactly what my b number is, okay? Right, because it does not say the y-intercept is this. It doesn't say that clearly, right? I'm still given enough information to be able to find the equation. We're gonna do it together here, but unfortunately, I can't just go right in and answer this and say, okay, this is my answer, I'm done. Okay, I have to do a little bit of work first to be able to find it, okay? So what do I have to do here? What do I have to do? Well, again, what do I know? I know that the slope is two. So if I'm kind of filling in what I know right now, my equation is gonna be y equals two x plus, and then that mystery b number that I don't quite know yet. So my job is to find that. I need to find this b number, okay? And how do I do that? Well, I look at what I'm given, okay? I have this m number is two, okay? And then this point right here, again, the point in and of itself isn't super helpful, but I can use it, okay? Because think about this, a point, what's a point? A point is just two numbers, right? But one of them is an x number and one of them is a y number, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do with that, okay? With my slope intercept equation, y equals mx plus b, right? Think about just that equation. I have four letters in there, right? Y, M, X, and B, okay? And then this description that I'm given, I'm given three, right? I'm given an M number, I'm given, and then an X and a Y number, right? This point kind of gives me an X and a Y number. So I can put all of those into the, in, substitute those in for those letters in this equation and, and solve for that, right? So watch what I'm gonna do. So the M number is two, like I said, the y number, okay, again, the set, y is the second number I'm given in my point. So that's gonna go in for y in my equation, right? That's gonna be seven equals, okay, and then it's m times x, right, m times x. So my m number I'm given, that's two, and my x number I'm given as well, that's four, okay? So two times four, and again, this b number is the one that I don't know yet, so that's gonna remain as just b, okay? But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to substitute all of these values into this equation, and I'm gonna be able to solve this for b, okay? Because again, my goal here, I know this about the general uh, equation thus far, I just don't know this b number. So solving for this b is kind of my last step in the process. Okay, so what do I need to do to solve for b? Well, I just need to get it by itself, right? That's how I solve an equation, is get that unknown value by itself, okay? And so two times four, well, two times four is eight. So right now I have seven equals eight plus B, okay? And then the B is not by itself yet, right? At, on this right side, I need to cancel out this positive eight. And so I need to minus the eight from both sides, okay? And if I do that, seven minus eight, seven minus eight is negative one, right? And so negative one is my B number, right? Because B is by itself then. So negative one equals b, okay? 
And that's not quite my final answer, but that's the last piece of the puzzle that I did not know yet, right? I didn't know what B was. And so I can then substitute that in, right? Because now I found my last part of it. So my M number was two, right? I was told that from the beginning, but now I just found my B number is negative one. And that was the last thing I needed, okay? So Y equals two X minus one is the equation of this line, okay? If you're still confused by that, I'm going to go over one more, and then hopefully by the end it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, so number five, the slope of this line, this mystery line I don't know much about. I know its slope is negative one-third, and I know it goes through this random point. Okay, so again, you can sketch a little mini graph if that helps you, okay, to kind of visualize it. Um, but negative one-third slope, okay, so let's think about that. Okay, again, that, what is that? That's my M number, okay. And then again, it goes through this random point, okay? Again, that point isn't super helpful, but what it can do is give me an X and a Y value that I can use to find my last unknown piece of the puzzle, which is this B value, okay? So I take that Y equals MX plus B equation, and I substitute all these numbers in here that I know, okay, that I'm given. So Y equals MX plus B, so that Y number, negative one, right, that's that point, okay, negative one and for y, m times x, right, y equals mx plus b, so m times x, so that would be negative one-third, and don't be confused by the fraction, I know it's scary, but it'll actually work out pretty nice here. So negative one-third times negative six, plus that unknown b number, I don't know it yet, okay? So again, you solve this out for the b, okay? And so what I need to do here first is multiply negative one-third times negative six. And you can use a calculator for that. Again, remember, negative one-third is the same as just negative 0 0.333, repeating forever. So it would be negative one equals, this ends up being positive two, okay, positive two, okay, plus B, okay? So I told you it worked out pretty nice. And then, right, I need to get B by itself, so I need to minus this two from both sides. So I do that, minus two from both sides to cancel, and I'm left with negative three equals B, right? Negative one minus two takes me to negative three. So I'm not done here. A lot of kids make the mistake of just saying, oh, I found my B, I'm done, okay? But it's not asking what's B, right? That's the part of the puzzle that I didn't have. So I technically did all the work I needed, but the final answer is the equation, okay? So you need to put that and the M number into the equation and then you're done, okay? So y equals negative one-third x minus three. Okay, so that is my slope-intercept equation, okay? The one question I often get with these is, Mr. Jones, why do you write your equation like this, right? Didn't it tell you the x and y number? So why didn't you put those numbers in for x and y? That's a great question if you're asking that. Um, this is just one instance. This is one specific point that's on this line. You remember a line is a collection of like an infinite number of points, okay? And the X and Y are kind of in there to kind of mean like, okay, X and Y could be anything, um, but here's the specific like equation that defines this line, okay? So the X and Y are kind of left intentionally like not filled in as numbers because there's a lot of different points that they could be. Okay, but the M and the B values are the ones that are more constants, that are ones that those are the same the whole time, but the X and Y values change. Those are called variables, okay? And so this one specific point that's on this line does not get included in the final answer, even though we use it to help me find that B value, okay? So we plug it in to find my answer, but we don't use, don't include it in the, in the final, final answer, okay? Hope that makes sense to you. That is finding equations of lines. We're going to go over a couple of different instances uh, that are a little bit more difficult in other videos, but hope that first one makes sense. Good job. Thanks for following.